Hello, this is Mrs. Rowe, and welcome back to our Learning Biology at Home series as we are looking at the results from our investigating osmosis lab using vegetable slices. In fact, for this lab, we have used sweet potatoes. For those of you at home, I told you you could use any root vegetable. You could use celery. You could use apple slices, um, potatoes, carrots, what peppers could even use strawberries, whatever you had at, on hand that you could easily slice. Um, so how did yours come out? Let's take a look at ours and what, what happened with ours overnight. So again, I took out my control, which I did keep covered so that it wouldn't just dry out. Otherwise, that would have affected our results. And I can see that it is kind of in the middle here. I can bend it. It has the word we want. Turgidity is it it's got some Christmas it hasn't wilted I didn't leave it out to dry which would have made it kind of start to wilt um, but it certainly doesn't feel like something I could snap you can see that it's bending but it doesn't feel like it's just gonna snap so that's our control so let's look at first um, what happens if we soak it in water so this over here is my sweet potato in water I can feel right away that it, it's stiff like a piece of cardboard. Um, yeah, it's. I can still bend it because of its size. I can still bend it, but compared to this, um, I have to work harder. This is why doing this at home is so important, so that you, looking at it, they don't look very different. Um, but it feels much stiffer. It, I can snap it. It, it snaps very easily because of that extra turgor pressure that is in there. When I bend this one the same degree, it's not snapping. It's got much more bend to it, okay? So what has caused this to be so much crisper? What has caused this to be more tur turgid, which is, let's go back for a minute, what is turgor pressure? Well, if you read your lab, and hopefully you have your lab out or your notebook out so you're writing down your observations. Turgor pressure simply means water pressure. Remember those central vacuoles found in the center of our plant cells. Um, that's where water gets stored. These are root vegetables, so they're going to pull water into them. But all cells are going to be capable of pulling water either, well, allowing water to move passively either into or out of the cell as they try to maintain water balance. Um, one of the important things here is cells, plant cells have cell walls. And so they can't just expand like a balloon. Instead, that pressure is going to build. They're going to get that water pressure, that hydrostatic pressure. And we see that in a plant that has gone wilt. You forgot to water your plant for a day. Um, and then you go water it. And what happens? The plant grows upright again as that water pressure allows it to stand up. So unless you have a woody stem, if you're a soft stem like a grass, like I'm trying to think, I've got some plants over here, um, some herbs, things like that, those are basically depending on water pressure, that turgor pressure to stand upright, okay? And it's a great indicator when you need to water your plant, when you see the leaves start to go limp, they're losing turgor pressure. Okay, and our Second one, what do you think now that you've seen what happened in water, what do you think the effect of salt water is going to be? So for example, the winter, we put salt on our roads. What's going to be the effect in the, in the spring when all that salt dissolves in the rain and ends up at the roots of the plants? Um, what might be the effect here? Well, when I take this one out, my first impression is it feels slimy. Um, not like this one. This it's wet, but I mean, it doesn't feel slimy. This one feels slimy and it's got a lot of bend. It feels really squishy. Um, this, if this were an apple, I would almost say it's like a mushy apple, whereas the one on the water one would be like a crisp apple. So this would be much more mushy. You can see there's a lot, look at the difference. There's a lot more bend here. Whereas this one with one hand, I can't bend it at all. There's a huge difference in how much I can bend it. So what's giving it so much bend? Why is it feeling like this? What happened in the salt water? So just write your observations down. And next tomorrow's um, lesson is going to be looking at some animations, videos, and notes and to start adding some of the words. 
which one did water enter the cells? Which one did water leave the cells? And why did water move? We can see that there was a difference. Water went into one, making it crisp. Water left one, making it wilty. But why? Why did the water go in or why did the water leave? We didn't put any pressure on it. We didn't. It just happened. It's just the way these things move. Why do they move that way? What process caused this to happen? In terms of application, why does this matter? Well, have you ever, I'm sure your mom or dad or grandparents could relate to the fact that if you've ever trying to make a meal and you pull the celery or the carrots out of the, out of the refrigerator and you realize, oops, they've been in there a little longer than I thought and they feel like this. They're a little bit limp and you're wondering, can I still use those? Well, here's an experiment you can do. Is it reversible? Take the one that's been in salt and put it in the water. Can you reverse it? Can you get it to crisp up again so that when you go to chop that celery, you've got nice crisp, crisp celery that you can chop? Um, and if I put this one from the water into the salt, will it have the opposite effect? On this side, well, if you've ever sprained an ankle and the ankle swells up, what do you do? I have my husband's grandmother, when her ankles would swell up, she used to swear by just sitting by the ocean and soaking her feet in that cold salt water, and it probably did help to reduce the swelling. You soak your, your ankle in, in salt water. How is that helping to reduce the swelling? What is it doing? Okay, so those are some questions I want you to think about. So for now, you're just recording these observations. In the water, it became crisp. It became more turgid. In the salt water, it became more... Uh, wilty, mushy, and it, in both of them are the extremes of the control, which was kind of in the middle. Well, that's it for today, and I'll see you again tomorrow. So hope you are enjoying your labs at home. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I will talk to you again soon.